Hey YouTube, it's Matt. Um, so we got a video here showing some routine foot treatment. So what you'll see here is we're working on the IPJ or the, the mid the, the joint of the hallux. Um, we're debriding using a ten blade and the scalpel. So what you the one, number one thing is that you want to do with the scalpel is to remove all the dead tissue and make sure that there's some skin tension. So that's why you can see that we're pulling the um, toe back. Here we've moved to the heel to remove some of the, the callusing around the heel. Again, you'll notice with the left hand, we're trying to pull the skin back to provide some skin tension. Um, this does commonly happen during winter months, but we can also notice it during summer months. Some people are also more just predisposed to having callusing formations, as you can see on this patient. And if you notice here on the, the left foot at the fifth MPJ on the bottom, so that's a uh, metatarsal phalangeal joint. Um, there is what we call a holomoderm or a corn. So you can kind of see it there in the middle. Um, so I'm working on the, the, the outside to make sure it's nice and flush with the skin here. And then you'll notice there right in the middle is the, the corn. Again, you'll notice the skin tension, something that you've always want to try and maintain so that you don't cut the patient. And there I'm pointing to the, the holoma. So here I've switched to a 15 blade um, to get a more finer detail. Um, so we're taking down the tissue and again making it flush with the surrounding tissue and then it's just making that holoma durum a little bit more noticeable in the center there. Um, now holoma durums are high areas of pressure um, and so you can see here we're going to try and enucleate it meaning we're going to try and take the center piece out. A holoma or a corn feels like someone's walking on a pebble so they can become quite tender. Um, the nice part is is when we remove the corn it provides a lot of relief for the patient. Um, because corns and callus are um, pressure sensitive, if you do not remove the pressure, the corn or callus will come back. So unfortunately, this w is something that will come back, but with treatment options, you can ideally prevent them from coming back. So again, I'm enucleating it. Um, so I'm using the kind of the tip of the blade to get around the callus to help remove that center piece there. Um, biggest thing is you want to try and remove it all because if you don't remove all of the callus then it will always feel like a pebble and you'll provide no relief for your patient so um, you can see I'm being a little picky trying to get that out and then you'll notice here again we're just working on the other side of the foot kind of on the toe there you'll notice that the, the big joint um, there is some dry skin so it's, it's a high pressure area for this patient um, something common to, to happen um, in that area especially with the the bunion there you'll notice that they're not going to get adequate dorsiflexion of that first MPJ joint so they're going to have buildup of callus because of towing off through this location And you'll see with taking off all that tissue, you'll notice a little bit of fissuring in there. Callus um, skin or, or the dead skin, the dead callus skin is not as elastic as healthy tissue. Um, this leads to cracking and, and ultimately fissuring, which means a, a crack in the skin that can open and bleed. So that's why you want to try and take some of that tissue down to allow for the elasticity to become back to the skin. So again, the callusing or hyperkeratosis, meaning more skin than normal, um, is, is a pressure related um, and it's something that happens due to pressure. Um, I like to use a 15 blade at the end of the, the toes and on the smaller tissue just to clean it up a little bit nicer. And that's what you can see that I'm doing here. Um, and again, you want to make sure that you have your, your anchor point so that when you are debriding, you're not going to cut the, cut the patient or cause any trauma. And so here's a little bit closer video of the heel callusing or hyperkeratosis. And again, you can see those small little cracks. So the skin is quite dry. The, this patient would benefit from using a, an emollient or a moisturizer to help kind of keep the elasticity in the skin and prevent the buildup of the callusing tissue and the, the fissuring. Um, so it's, it's nice. It's something that we can assist with and bring down. But ultimately, if you don't maintain it, it, it will be something that will come back. 
So the hairs, we're just trimming the toenails. Um, one thing patients always say is that, that our nippers are quite intimidating. So they are intimidating, but we need them to last us as long as we can. Um, so you'll see that they do look quite big, but it's just so it makes our job easier. And it's not that intimidating. They're just big and look scary. You'll notice that the big toe is quite involuted or kind of can grow into the corners on this one. So you'll see we want to cut straight across and make sure that we're getting all of the nail. Um, and then you'll see kind of on the, that I'm doing that on the same side here. We're cutting straight across and making sure that we've got all that nail. Again, you want to try and leave about a millimeter of growth of the, the white tissue there or the, the, the nail. Um, and so that's just to make sure that you're not going too deep. So on this patient too, you'll notice the second toe is looks a little discolored or, or thicker. So that is an onychoxic nail um, and it is common. It's a pincer nail. So you can see there how that nail would become thicker and that can sometimes be tender. So what you want to do is make sure that you cut that nail down. You got to wash the skin underneath um, and, and file it at the end to make it nice and smooth. And again, on the big toenail here, you'll notice that we're going straight across to make sure that we're not preventing any ingrowns or causing any ingrowns and preventing ingrowns. So this patient has rubbing between the third and the fourth and that's why you're getting the callus buildup there. So you'll notice I took the 15 blade again to, to reduce that tissue. So here we are filing the nails. So this is kind of just a finishing approach that I like to do to make sure all the nails are nice and smooth and clean. Um, it beats the hand file, makes me, so I can save my wrist so I don't need to, uh, to go on disability when I'm, I'm older. So it's nice to have this device. And again, it's just something that will um, file that tissue nice and smooth and, and make sure the nails are nice and smooth so they don't catch on anything. And so what I like to do too is kind of, you know, if, if on the end of the toes, if there is that little bit of callusing, so I'll use the, the burr to just make sure that's nice and smooth. It can be hard with a bigger um, Moore's disc or device that um, could irritate the tissue or cut the tissue. So a burr is a nice tool to use in this regard. And it's just, again, it's a nice finishing tool. So you can see how I'll use it against the skin there to make sure that it's nice and smooth. Um, and you can see how much tissue it does actually take off. Um, and again, that will feel a lot better for the patient. So here's the second toe and you can see how I smooth that nail out to make it so there's no, not so much pressure. And you'll see that kind of millimeter of growth there as well. And then um, I like to go some, run sometimes the, the burr across the top of the nail when they are thick, just so that there's not so much pressure in the shoe. Um, and then just to make sure everything's smooth. So here you can see we have the Moore's disc. Again, what I'm doing is making sure that that tissue is nice and flush with the skin. Um, so that they don't feel like there's a ridge or any callusing. Callusing can be annoying when you're walking on it all day. And then you'll see that I'm working on the heels and that's again, just to make sure that everything's nice and smooth, try and get those last little bit of cracks out. Um, and then when we use the emollient or moisturizer, then we can make sure that that skin is nice and healthy there. It'll feel also a lot better for the patient. So you'll notice I used the burr here before and then I'm using the Moore's disc kind of as like a finishing touch. It just covers more surface area, um, but it's sometimes harder to be fine when you have such a bigger um, tool. But when you wanna do something that takes more tissue, such as the heel, it is a nice tool to have. And again, it saves your wrist when you can use something like the drill to make sure that you are getting all of the tissue and making sure it's nice and smooth. One thing with the burr, you have to make sure is that you move fast. You don't want to keep this, the burr filed in the same spot or else it's going to cause um, a burning sensation and can be uncomfortable for the patient. So here you can see we, we, we're using quite a bit of emollient because the patient has very dry feet. Um, but since we've kind of taken all that tissue down, it is a nice feature to be able to give to the patient so that we can make sure that skin is at least healthy when they leave the office. Um, it is something that would, this patient would want to maintain at least twice a day to make sure that they are, um, you know, keeping that skin nice and smooth and not allowing it to dry out.